Hello and welcome to Sharing Your Great Practice. Now this week we're in Norwich at Notre Dame High School, which is a specialist language college. And they believe here very firmly that languages are a perfect way to share resources, both with schools in the local community and beyond. It's hard not to be impressed by the energy and language learning that this school demonstrates. Now for the teachers, their commitment goes far beyond the school gates. We are a language college, but we became a language college because we did well in languages. So, you know, it's all sort of feeding each other. Um, and therefore all of our children have to do a language. We get a few who sort of complain a bit, but they do see the need for it. They understand it. We are an international school in that we look out, but also internally we're international. We have children, which is unusual in Norfolk, we have children from over 30 different countries and speaking over 30 languages. We have people like Yvonne who goes out and helps actually train the teachers. She's um, an advanced skills teacher. We have Nelly, who, her, whose job is to go to the feeder schools and teach the children at all different levels. She doesn't just do French and um, also to teach the teachers. Why do we do it? I think possibly because we are so mad keen on languages ourselves. But also it's, it's stimulating, it stimulates us, it stimulates other people. Um, it's lots of like cross-pollination. If you, if you don't share, then, then you, you stagnate. And so it gives us new ideas. We get an idea from somebody who says, oh, I've just used this, and change it a bit. And, and then we pass it on to somebody else who changes it. Or, you know, we all do that, and it's, it's, it, it's the way to keep everybody fresh. They've designed a series of language learning websites in French, Spanish and German and they're popular with schools in Britain and abroad. I've built a website um, which has approximately 6,000 resources on it, all of which are completely free and which is accessed by schools from literally all over the world. Languages are meant for communication and um, that's the point of a website, it's communicating but in an electronic format. It's personalising the learning for them, so um, what we teach in class corresponds to the activities that are on the website um, and it also means that they're able to use it for revision purposes, um, the assessments that we do, the, the vocabulary sheets are all on the website as well so they can, they can access it. Um, if they've missed a class, they've got the opportunity to, to catch up using the, um, the internet. I think it's just a matter of making sure that um, other teachers have access to, access to those materials, um, that teaching resources that we produce are there as a sort of a time-saving measure as well for them, um, and that we're, you know, we're sharing good practice. The school also teaches Japanese. Their teacher, Tom Pritchard, made links with a school in Japan, set up a blog, and now they share video resources to stimulate language learning. Well, the instant feedback, I suppose, it is they, they take time making the video, but then to see that somebody else in Japan has actually watched that video and commented upon it is a motivational talk in itself. Um, so it certainly motivates them. It makes the language more real for them. Um, because you know most of the kids won't have been to Japan, um, so it's good to see Japanese people reacting to their own Japanese, so they can tell that it works. They can tell they can communicate with that language. Now, this confidence in teaching languages has led to the school investing in a full-time teacher who visits around ten feeder schools in Suffolk and Norfolk to support primary teachers in teaching languages. On the one hand, I mean it's a great asset for. The, the teachers on, on site because obviously they can observe some other lessons and build up on their bank of uh, resources and get some new ideas they could try out um, at a later stage. And on the other hand, it's very, very useful obviously to increase the student's confidence mm -hmm. uh, from an early age. Right after each lesson, usually we exchange some resources, whether it is PowerPoint or um, some copies of different materials. Now, obviously, in every single lesson, um, I always support the lesson with lots of um, ICT materials. So I can always guide them where to find information, where to find interesting websites. Uh, that's, that's one of the way. And one of my objectives, obviously, um, is to help these teachers to, to increase their confidence as we go along. So usually they observe the lesson and then have a go by themselves um, during the week. Sharing resources works at so many different levels at this school. Not only is it about sharing material resources, it's also about sharing confidence in teaching. Part of the ethos of the school is, is community-based, um, and that extends beyond the parameters of the school fence. Um, and it's crucial that we feel not only that 
we can contribute, but people see that we're contributing to the development. Um, yes, we, we would like the students in Notre Dame to do very well, but actually we would like students to, in any school to do well. Um, and if we find something that we do well, why not share it? And more importantly, it gives us the opportunity to go into other schools to see what they're doing well. Um, and many of the initiatives that we have at this school are based on things that fortunately I or colleagues have seen from actually just going around and seeing other schools. Um, I don't think we can do enough of just going in to watch each other teach. We're always looking to, to improve what we're doing. We're, we're not prepared to stop and stand still. We, we, we really want to ensure that the students get the best that they can when they're here. If you want to share resources with other schools at home and abroad, here are some top tips from the staff at Notre Dame School. Sharing teaching expertise will give you as much back as you give out. Every school community is different, so be sensitive to what the other school needs. Listen and assess, and then suggest materials. Setting up websites and blogs is a perfect way to share resources with a global community. Use your learning platforms to share materials, and remember to listen to your own pupils, because resources that work for them will most probably inspire other children. To find out how you can take part in sharing your great practice, then visit the Teachers TV website and find the Sharing Your Great Practice page.